At this moment nine o'clock struck. D'Artagnan started. Ah, yes, said Portos. There is nine o'clock. We have a rendezvous. You remember, at the place Royal. Ah, stop, hold your peace. Portos, don't remind me of it is that which has made me so cross since yesterday I shall not go. Why, asked Portos, because it is a grievous thing for me to meet again those two men who caused the failure of our enterprise. And yet, said Portos, neither of them had any advantage over us. I still had a loaded pistol, and you were in full fight, sword in hand. Yes, said D'Artagnan, but what if this rendezvous had some hidden purpose? Oh, said Portos, you can't think that. D'Artagnan, D'Artagnan did not believe Athos to be capable of a deception, but he sought an excuse for not going to the rendezvous. We must go, said the superb lord of Brechu, lest they should say we were afraid we who have faced fifty foes on the high road can well meet two in the place royal. Yes, yes, but they took part with the princes without apprising us of it. Athos and Aramis have played a game with me, which alarms me we discovered yesterday the truth. What is the use of going today to learn something else? You really have some distrust. Then, said Portos, of Aramis, yes, since he has become an ab, you can't imagine, my dear fellow, the sort of man he is. He sees us on the road which leads him to a bishopric, and perhaps will not be sorry to get us out of his way. Ah, as regards Aramis, that is another thing, said Portos, and it wouldn't surprise me at all. Perhaps Monsieur de Beaufort will try, in his turn, to lay hands on us. Nonsense. He had us in his power, and he let us go. Besides, we can be on our guard, let us take arms. Let Planchet post himself behind us with his carbine. Planchet is a fronder, answered D'Artagnan. Devil take these civil wars. One can no more now reckon on one's friends than on one's footmen, said Portos. Ah, if Mousquetin were here, there's a fellow who will never desert me, so long as you are rich. Ah, my friend, tis not civil war that disunites us. It is that we are each of us twenty years older. It is that the honest emotions of youth have given place to suggestions of interest, whispers of ambition, counsels of selfishness. Yes, you are right, let us go. Poor toss. But let us go well armed, were we not to keep the rendezvous. They would declare we were afraid. Hallo, Planchet, here saddle our horses. Take your carbine. Whom are we going to attack? Sir, no one, a mere matter of precaution, answered the Gascon. You know, sir, that they wish to murder that good counselor, Brousel, the father of the people. Really, did they? said d'artagnan yes but he has been avenged he was carried home in the arms of the people his house has been full ever since he has received visits from the cotutor from madame de longueville and the prince de conti madame de chevreuse and madame de vendome have left their names at his door and now whenever he wishes well whenever he wishes planchet began to sing Unvent de Frances leaves matin, G. Croix xil grand country le mazarin, Unvent de Frances leaves matin. It doesn't surprise me, said d'Artagnan, in a low tone to Portos, that Mazarin would have been much better satisfied had I crushed the life out of his counselor. You understand? Then, monsieur, resumed Planchet, that if it were for some enterprise like that undertaken against Monsieur Brousel, that you should ask me to take my carbine. No, don't be alarmed, but where did you get all these details? From a good source? Sir, I heard it from Freakit. From Freakit I know that name. A son of Monsieur de Brousel's servant, and a lad that, I promise you, in a revolt will not give away his share to the dogs. Is he not a singing boy at Notre Dame? asked d'artagnan yes 
that is the very boy is patronized by Bazin. Ah, uh, yes, I know. Of what importance is this little reptile to you? asked Portos. Gad replied D'Artagnan, he has already given me good information, and he may do the same again. Whilst all this was going on, Athos and Aramis were entering Paris by the Faubourg Saint Antoine. They had taken some refreshment on the road and hastened on, that they might not fail at the appointed place. Bazin was their only attendant, for Grimit had stayed behind to take care of Mousquetten. As they were passing onward, Athos proposed that they should lay aside their arms and military costume, and assume a dress more suited to the city.